Greetings. What a joy it is to be here, and especially uh, for this occasion. It's a joy to be here for the celebration of new ministry. Typically, we hold these celebrations to install a new rector or priest in charge uh, into a congregation. The service is designed to celebrate the new beginning for everyone, the whole congregation, and not merely the priest. I certainly uphold this idea of the ministry of the whole people of God, but we should also asterisk the new ministry designation. Yes? I mean, come on. Father Case has been serving at Trinity Church for nearly two years. got here in June of 2020 in the midst of the COVID-19 <laughs> pandemic. What a way to begin. So together, you all been at this for a while. Even in the midst of it all, tremendous ministry has been going on at and through Trinity Church, uh, even through COVID-19. According to Father Chase, attendance is picking up again. Easter was especially strong. Don't we give thanks for that? Yes? Yeah, we can yeah. do that. Come on. Come on. And I want to I wanna share with you the good news that I'm hearing that across the Diocese of New Jersey. Um, for those of you that uh, don't know, uh, I, I, I'm the Bishop of the Diocese of New Jersey, which is made up of 137 congregations in the southern two-thirds of the state of New Jersey. That is from a line roughly from Elizabeth South to Cape May. And uh, just across the whole diocese, I'm hearing the same thing. The churches had a resurgence at Easter and Holy Week, and things have felt good. So praise God for that. So Easter was strong here, it was strong elsewhere. Uh, we are thankful. The music program, which has historically been a vital part of Trinity Church's identity and life, is once again thriving. I can hear that myself. <laughs> it's thriving under the leadership. Under the leadership of your relatively new Director of Music and Arts, Dr. Deborah Simkin King. Even with the challenge of not having a dedicated staff person, Christian Formation is getting traction again, especially with online offerings, and that's been the growth curve for us as a whole church, yes? yes. Yeah, we've, we've come into the 21st century. That's a good thing. All of these are more and more are indicators of congregational health and vitality and again, even in the midst of this challenging COVID-19 environment. One of the things that is true about our celebration today is our formalizing a change in Father Chase's status from priest in charge to rector. The, re the vestry in Father Chase's request for this change underscores the fact that the relationship is working and that the leadership, including Father Chase, and the parish desire to think of a long-term commitment in their call together. That's good news, isn't it? Yeah? Yeah, you can do that. Go ahead. <laughs> Essentially, a rector is a tenured position. In truth, priests in charge work at my will. That's not a bad thing. <laughs> it's not a bad thing. But that's, in fact, the canonical truth. Congratulations, Father Chase. You are now the rector of Trinity Church, as we I got a bunch of thank yous to say. Uh, I am most grateful to Dr. Leslie Castellini, Russell Bennett, who are the wardens, to all the vestry of Trinity Church for your leadership, not only in this whole transition process, but also in the trying circumstances of COVID-19. Every church I'm visiting today, I, I have to feel compelled to, to point out, it's not easy keeping a church sustained and going in the best of times in recent decades. In this environment, it has been especially challenging. What, can I ask all the wardens and vestry who have served in the last three years, please stand up. Wardens and vestry, last three years. Give them a hand. God bless them. God bless them. They did a great job. (Applause) 
your perseverance and faithfulness have been outstanding. Thank you. I also want to give special shout outs to Del O'Hara and Bill Pursuti, who were the uh, wardens and search committee chairs uh, and uh, elongated terms and did phenomenal work. I saw Del earlier. Where are you, Del? <laughs> Del is a hero. You're a hero, Dr. Del O'Hara. Thank you. Her leadership was incredible uh, in that role and through a number of challenging changes uh, for Trinity Church. Uh, I'm aware that Dr. Uh, Castellini has also worked closely in all of it. So again, uh, senior wardens always absorb a significant amount of responsibility. Thank you so very, very much. Uh, yeah. And uh, I, I also want to lift up uh, Jill Osis, a uh, director of our She's a director of operations and parish administrator who is absolute goal, extraordinaire. I'm going to exercise a little more personal privilege with a few more shout outs. Uh, first to Deacon Gail Bennett, who is among the most senior deacons in the Diocese of New Jersey with 37 years? 37 years of service. During my time, Deacon Gale has served on diocesan council as deputy of the Episcopal Church's General Convention. She is almost a senior deputy to General Convention. A senior deputy in Episcopal Church terms is someone who has served at seven General Conventions. She is at six. Friends, General Convention happens once every three years. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. She's been a long-term member of the Diocesan Finance and Budget Committee, but most of all, she has been a pastoral care person for all of us, and we give deep, deep thanks for that. Uh, she served as your deacon here faithfully and well since 2005. What a treasure. And um, Deacon Carolyn Bradley doesn't have quite as many years of service as Deacon Gilroy, so I lost her. Oh, there she right behind the barn. Right? It's the cataract clearance, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, um, but I had the privilege of ordaining her in 2015, and from that moment, she's played a vital role in this church, in the community, in the wider diocesan community, serving on ministry with older adults as part of our diocesan pastoral response team, uh, as a, she does some of our safe church trainings, and as a member of the LGBTQ Commission. I've been aware of the injury she sustained a few months ago and all you went through, and I am just delighted you're here and back up and about and pray that you will uh, experience complete healing. This church is blessed with the Reverend Lucille Donnie, who's an active part of this community and its ministries, as well as Father Jeff and Linda Curtis, Father Tom Conway. There is a lot of experience and talent helping equip Trinity Church Asbury Park, uh, helping them to equip the saints for the work of ministry. Yes, let's acknowledge all of them. Our celebration of new ministry at Trinity Church today takes place in the wider context of the third Sunday in Easter and our ongoing observance of the great 50 days of Easter. I love that Easter's 50 days. We, we just don't emphasize that enough. You know, we were on our knees in penitence and fasting for 40 days. <laughs> it's time to celebrate for 50. <laughs> I've also designated this Sunday Episcopal Community Services Sunday across the Diocese of New Jersey. ECS NJ Sunday is a day for us all to lift up and celebrate this ministry we have created together as a diocesan community in response to a very real challenge and question. The challenge, the question, how might 137 congregations scattered across the lower two thirds of the state of New Jersey from Elizabeth to Cape May work in concert to address desperate human need across the community served by our congregations, including Trinity Asbury Park. And beyond this, how can we the people who constitute the Diocese of New Jersey together meaningfully address the injustices and inequities that are all too often the root cause behind those desperate needs, recognizing we are stronger together than we are when we are alone. 
uh, I want to acknowledge uh, that Trinity Church Asbury Park is among our exemplary organizations in the area of social justice and human need. I also want to acknowledge uh, uh, St. Augustine's Asbury Park as well. And uh, Father William Adishabandi is here. Shout out. And St. Augustine's, I know we got leaders from St. Augustine's. If you could stand, those of you are able to stand, let's say, raise your hands. Let's acknowledge them as well. And we delight and lift up and want to celebrate the ongoing connection of the two churches in Asbury Park as a witness because the separateness of them has been a historic witness to injustice and to racism. And so to the degree that we can find ways to do the work of God in the space between the two, amidst the two, with the people of the two, we are doing God's work and ministry. For many years, Trinity has been consistent in both meeting human need and in advocating for justice. It has been my honor and pleasure to work with Derek and Liza Minow Bloom over many, my years as bishop on a number of projects, and I saw Derek somewhere out there. <laughs> uh, he's been a resource uh, for me and for the wider diocesan community. Uh, they, as, they've helped us to have both, he and Liza, have helped us have eyes to see and ears to hear. Episcopal Community Services of the Diocese of New Jersey was created to serve at the intersection of human need and injustice. It is a chief means by which we join together as a diocesan community, support the phenomenal human needs work being done through our congregations, and advocate with, voice, with one voice for love, justice, and equality for all people. ECSNJ is a means by which we live into our baptismal promises to seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving our neighbor as ourselves, and to strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being. Since its inception in the fall of 2020, ECSNJ has given or committed to more than $200,000 in grants to congregations of the Diocese of New Jersey engaged in impactful ministry in their communities. Among the $96,000 in grants just announced in this spring cycle is included $15,000 to Trinity Asbury Park to help support the church's radical well-being program, which I'm sure most of you are aware is a holistic program that offers housing assistance, life coaching, connections to mental and physical wellness resources, advocacy training, and access to addiction uh, and use disorder recovery support, financial literacy, and overall community building. This is the second $15,000 grant awarded to Trinity by Episcopal Community Services of the Diocese of New Jersey. That shows our community working together to support outreach ministries. I want to do that too. Come on. In, in this grant cycle, ECS New Jersey also provided $8,000 to St. Mark's Plainfield. There were a total of nine grants. I'm just going to name a couple. In this grant they cycle, they uh, provided $8,000 to St. Mark's Plainfield, which is partnering with the Plainfield Grassroots Community Development Corporation to offer the Out of the Box Club, a math and science program for the children in Plainfield and other undeserved communities in central New Jersey. $15,000 was granted to St. Paul's Camden for their Feed My Sheep program. For 30 years, St. Paul's has operated a significant feeding program in downtown Camden. The grant provided by Episcopal Community Services of New Jersey, that is by all of us, will provide construction funds to pay for the expansion needed for storage of non-perishable food items canned goods, and other non-perishables. Feed My Sheep is the title of that program. What a good segue into today's gospel reading. Feed My Sheep, Jesus instructs Peter in the reading appointed for today from chapter 21 of John's gospel. It's a resurrection appearance that takes place after Easter morning. What begins as, well, a fish story, <laughs> I'm glad you got that. <laughs> what begins as a fish story quickly becomes an account of the rehabilitation of Peter, his restoration following his three denials of Christ and his commissioning to do the Lord's work. It's a breakfast scene with loaves and fishes served, reminding us both of the feeding of the 5,000 but also of the Eucharist. It includes a powerful, poignant exchange between Jesus and Peter, 
Jesus asked Peter three times if he loves him, and after each affirmative response, commands Peter to feed or tend his flock. Imagine Peter's hurt. Jesus' three questions are an echo of the three denials. Both Peter and Jesus are aware that when the moment of decision had come, Peter's courage failed him. He lost his faith and fled. In this breakfast exchange, Jesus convicts Peter, but he doesn't just leave Peter there wallowing in guilt. He restores P Peter to his fellowship and to his love, showing, showering tenderness and mercy upon him. And he again calls Peter to follow and serve him as he had done by the Sea of Galilee three years earlier. Jesus makes Peter aware that the call to be his disciple has not gotten any easier, just the opposite. There will be only one outcome. Discipleship will cost Peter his life. And this is foreshadowed in today's gospel reading. Peter did follow. He went out preaching the gospel and serving in Christ's name and love until he was himself martyred. Sometime in the mid-60s, during the reign of Nero. Tradition holds that he was crucified in Rome. He asked to be crucified upside down because he did not feel himself worthy to die in the same manner as his Lord. Peter and the other disciples inherited Jesus' own mission and ministry and have passed it on down through the centuries. Today, we, you and I, are heirs of this. The ministry is ours. As we look at this day of celebrating new ministry, I want to underscore this, because we live in a consumerist culture. And too often, people think they're purchasing church products, a good sermon, good music, uh, that they come to church for programs for their children. I, uh, all those things are good. But we are not a commodity. We together are called to serve Christ. The ministry is ours, clergy and lay alike. It is so critical. We are heirs of Christ's mission and ministry. We are called into Jesus' own ministry, his own mission. It is the mission and ministry of reconciliation. It is the mission and ministry Jesus declared in Luke's gospel, chapter four, when he read from the prophet Isaiah, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor, release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to declare the acceptable year of the Lord. I consider churches that are actively, intentionally engaged in Jesus' mission and ministry of compassion and justice, Luke 4 churches. Do you love me? Jesus asked Peter and asked him, feed my sheep. Luke 4 churches are engaged in feeding and tending the flock of Christ, the flock that Christ has entrusted to them. Trinity Church, Asbury Park is a Luke 4 church. Father Chase, Jesus says to you, feed my sheep, tend my flock. But you're not the only one called to do this. Leslie, Carol, Russell, Gregory, Donna, Charles, Wendy, James, Andy, Bill, Adrian, Gail, Carolyn, Jeff, Siobhan, Derek, Liza, Deborah, Chris, Lucille, Catherine, Linda, Tom, indeed, all the people of Trinity Church Asbury Park, Jesus calls you, says to you, feed my sheep, tend my flock. This third Sunday in Easter, as we proclaim the risen Lord Christ, I give thanks for all that God is doing in you and through you as the people of God who are Trinity Church, Asbury Park. And I pray you will join me in giving thanks for the work we're doing together through Episcopal Community Services of the Diocese of New Jersey. God continue to bless you as you feed Christ's sheep and tend his flock. It is the way we love and serve Jesus.